Climate change is the most pressing challenge we face today. In the UK, the Climate Change Act commits us to reducing carbon emissions to 80% of their 1990 levels by the year 2050. And to do so requires a major rethink of the way we provide many of our essential services, including how we generate energy for power and heat. If you go back to the challenge of the Climate Change Act, it's an 80% reduction in emissions. Um, heat in the UK accounts for over 30% of those emissions and about 80% of people, 90% in cities, use gas, currently natural gas, which is methane, for heating. The energy industry has traditionally been based on carbon. Carbon dioxide is the biggest contributor to greenhouse gases. So that requires that the energy industry transforms over that period, which is a major technical and business challenge. Another key benefit of using gas for heat is its ability to store energy indefinitely and in huge volumes to manage peaks and troughs in demand. What gas does is it has the ability to store energy for an indefinite amount of time. So what we can do in the gas industry is manage these huge interseasonal swings between winter and summer by storing the gas in summer when there's a surplus because demand's low because no one's got the heating on and then using that stored gas in winter. You simply can't do that with an electrical system with the technology we've got today. The gas industry for the last 200 years has been putting in assets under the cities which are extensive assets. Now that distribution system is being upgraded with polyethylene and is perfect to transition between methane to hydrogen. The UK has been undertaking a major pipe replacement programme in the low and medium pressure distribution systems, replacing old iron pipes with polyethylene, a material suitable for transporting hydrogen. Significant amounts of many UK cities have already been upgraded and the programme is due for completion by 2032. Almost all the hydrogen made in the world today comes from steam methane reformers, tens of millions of tonnes a year. So the easy thing to do is to do more of the same. Steam methane reformers or SMRs are an established method of producing hydrogen at scale, already in operation in the UK like this plant at Teesside. In the United States, SMRs are already being used alongside established carbon capture technology to capture the separated carbon, which can be used for enhanced oil recovery or stored safely. Salt caverns act as reservoirs, providing a store of gas that allows the network to cope with intraday and interseasonal swings in demand. You need stores alongside so that the steam methane reformers can operate at their optimum, which is continuously. And when the gas demand in the city doesn't need the hydrogen, it can be diverted to the stores to refill them. It's the same methodology as we use for gas storage in the UK already. The north of England is a great place for salt caverns and hydrogen production. The gas is available, the salt's available, a good place to start doing this. To transport the hydrogen from the site of production and storage to Leeds, a hydrogen transmission pipeline will be built connecting the city's gas grid to Teesside and Hull. To determine if the existing gas network was the right size, Northern Gas Networks, the gas utility for Leeds, used their network design software, adapted to show the results when running hydrogen through the system. Modelling showed that the majority of the network is appropriately sized for hydrogen. At the extremities, some reinforcement will be required in order to ensure that supply is maintained at peak demands. With demand and associated supply resolved and the network established as the right size, the biggest challenge is to create a conversion strategy for the city which has minimal impact on customers. The team was able to draw on the lessons from the relatively recent Towns Gas to Natural Gas conversion and adapt these to the gas grids of today. Between 1966 and 1977, the UK undertook a Towns Gas to Natural Gas conversion which was a conversion that happened over 10 years um, and at peak in 71-72 the UK were converting 2.3 million appliances per annum. We would need to develop a new range of hydrogen appliances and hydrogen burners so we could go into properties and we could upgrade the appliance 
Using hydrogen to fuel appliances is not a technical challenge. There are already examples around the world like this hydrogen cooker. As far as the customer is concerned, it's probably the least disruptive um, change you would have to move to a clean carbon economy because you would be changing equipment within the house, but you wouldn't be having to change the whole infrastructure within the house. So minimal disruption in the highways and in the homes as well. The final part of the project is to establish how much the conversion will cost. The total costs for the project have been estimated at just over £2 billion, split approximately 50-50 between appliance upgrades across the city and the building of hydrogen production, storage and pipeline infrastructure. Additionally, around £140 million in initial annual costs will be required for hydrogen production and carbon capture, reducing significantly over time with economies of scale as more cities convert. Funding the project through a regulatory business plan would allow costs to be socialised across the UK, as was done for the original towns gas to natural gas conversion. This would result in a minimal impact on UK customers' gas bills. To demonstrate the potential impact of H21, the project team has also provided a vision of what a UK-wide incremental rollout of a hydrogen economy could look like. Because conversion is incremental, it can be fast or slow as required to meet UK carbon reduction targets. As well as heat, H21 can support decarbonisation of both transport and electricity generation with hydrogen refuelling stations and micro-combined heat and power appliances in the home. There are jobs in this for people. That there's a big economic impact that could take place. Leeds could become the centre for a hydrogen-based economy and a zero-carbon-based economy in the world. I think this is about the best example of the Northern Powerhouse and what it could mean that I've seen, where the benefits will be for Leeds as the biggest city in the north, but also the, the link to places like Selby and Wakefield and Teesside. Ultimately, H21 could position the UK as a world-leading hydrogen economy and establish a global market similar to the liquid natural gas market of today, providing a long-lasting, sustainable solution to energy decarbonisation.